Playing basketball can be difficult work. Players not only have to constantly run around the court, but just dribbling the basketball takes a lot of effort too. Why is that? It has to do with how the basketball bounces. When the ball hits the court, this bounce actually loses momentum by transferring some of its energy somewhere else. This means that to keep the ball bouncing, the basketball player must continually put more energy into the ball. In this project, you'll determine how high a basketball bounces on different surfaces relative to the height from which it was dropped. For this project, you'll need three different surfaces. They must be flat and have a wall perpendicular to them, a metric tape measure, painter's tape, video camera, flashcards to keep track of the trial number, someone to video the experiment, a basketball, a lab notebook, and a computer to watch the videos. I want to see how different surfaces affect how high the ball bounces, but first I need to research some things like different types of surfaces to use, different types of basketballs to use, the amount of air pressure that should be inside of a basketball. I have chosen to use three surfaces ranging from a soft surface, carpet, to a very hard surface like concrete. The bait in basketball is a naturally used high school basketball and I have elected to use that as my ball in the experiment. The basketball should be inflated to about 7 to 9 pounds of air pressure. I believe that the harder the surface is, the easier it is to bounce a basketball and the less amount of energy is required by the player to keep the ball bouncing. There are some steps you have to take to do this experiment. One, choose a wall next to the surface that you are going to test. Mark 100 centimeters up the wall, marking with masking tape every 20 centimeters. Two, set up a video camera so that you can see the top of the ball and also the floor. You can choose to use a tripod or ask a friend to videotape it. 3. Drop the ball from the top of the 100 cm mark on the wall. Make sure that the bottom of the ball is equal with the top of the last mark on the wall. Repeat this step 9 more times. Step 4. Repeat steps 1 through 3 on two different surfaces. 5. Rewatch the videos and fill out the research charts that are pasted below. Here are some examples of just the different types of trials. These are the research charts that you fill out after you have completed all of your trials. Fill out the surface, the hardness, the drop height, the bounce height, the height difference, and then the average height difference for each of the surfaces. When I dropped the basketball on the carpet, the ball's average height difference was 81.8 centimeters. When the ball was dropped onto the wood, the height difference was 53.6 centimeters. And when the ball was dropped onto concrete, its average height difference was 58.2 centimeters. This means that the wood allowed the basketball to retain the greatest height relative to the height that it was dropped from. The carpet took the most energy out of the ball, and it caused it to have the lowest height relative from where it was dropped. By, anal by analyzing the charts, I found that the wood took the least amount of energy from the basketball. This is able to be calculated because the ball bounced the highest from where it was dropped. The concrete was second and the carpet absorbed the most energy from the ball. This helps to explain why people use wood for basketball courts. The wood takes the least amount of energy from the ball, making it easier to bounce and taking less energy from the player to keep the ball bouncing. Concrete would work as an alternative and is sometimes used in gyms, but concrete is so dense that running on it would also drain a lot of energy from the player. Carpet is out of the picture to make a court of, out of because it would require a lot of energy just to keep the ball bouncing. In conclusion, I have found that my hypothesis was proven wrong. The concrete was the hardest surface and I believe that it would prove to be the best surface to conserve energy, but in actuality the wood allows for the greatest conservation of energy and allowed the ball to bounce the highest. If you want to do a fun and quick science project, this is the project for you. If I was to do this experiment again, I would try and use different surfaces and try to find a better surface that absorbs even less energy than wood and a surface that absorbs even more energy than carpet. I would try changing the variables to alter the results that I got. For example, I would, I would change the drop height of the ball so that the ball can gain more energy before it hits the ground. Overall, this was a very fun experiment and I recommend it to anyone.